Aoki Mikey here. Right, today basically I'm just going to teach you the basics of coding for Call of Duty World at War. There's not too much to it, and once you pick it up you'll be able to do a lot more than just code for World at War. First we're going to want to set up your mods folder. Basically how you're going to launch your mods once you've done your coding to it. You're going to want to start by making a new folder in your Call of Duty mods if you have this for the PC, I would suggest getting it, otherwise. Make the folder in your mods folder. In, in, in the folder you need to make a maps folder. You could have a weapons one, but that's a lot harder to get. I might add one into the description. Inside here you need three types of GSCs. Or, yeah. I'll take this out of here. You will need the debug and the HUD message, and that. I'll put all these into the description below anyway. Put them in there. I'm going to have to clear these out. That can stay. Apart from that, all this has to go. debug and then hud message. Hud message links to your debug init file, your init thread. Right, so through this we're gonna drag this into our text editor. For your text editor you can use basically there's two that I found which are really good. You've got Notepad++ which is here and then you've got Sublime. This is probably the better one out of them all because when you go to view you click syntax and you go to C sharp this will actually pick up your coding so unlike any others it will auto type it so if I was to just go self threat there you go it's right there it's not part of C sharp coding but it picked it up for you that's why I like this one right we're going to start off with threading whatever you're going to make from the spawn. So as soon as the player spawns, this is what will thread for them. Self defines the person that's called upon the script. So self would be the player, and up here has already been defined as the player. So each player that connects is now called player, and they've got their own separate on player spawn. Right, we're going to call this test. Down here, we need to make test. This is basic functionality. Put in too many things. So we can have a lot in here. We could do loops, which is for, or it can be while, while one. Both of them work for loops. I'm going to use this. I'm trying to not to blow that. Right. We're going to have a loop. Basically you have a few tags that you want to know, because this is just you starting off I'm guessing. You're going to have the comment script, the code, which you can write whatever and it doesn't affect it because the compiler won't read it. Then you have the second comment, which is a paragraph comment, so you can have anything between these lines. All right. Then you have self. Self is defining who's called upon it. If you had level, level would define the player the, that the level had called upon it, not you in the game. So just some basic things. So we have our loop tag. Wait. And then to make, let's say we will put self, so your player, then I print something. That is an L, don't ask me why. And then inside your quotation marks here, yeah, I think that's what they're called, you can put whatever you want, so hello, inside there, now you have that, this is where it starts to get quite simple, well, I don't know, not really simple, you can have weight 0 0.1, that is less than, it's more than a frame, but not by much, if you want a frame it's that, so we'll define that as a frame, spell. Then up here, 
this is your text that will show on the screen. Right, so wait is making it so once this is done, so it's self printed, it will wait and then it will do this code again. So that will constantly repeat. I'll show you what this does now. If I load up my Call of Duty, which is in the desktop somewhere. Okay, I have too much shit. I'm a game booster just to make sure. Hopefully this won't cancel my recording. I have some profile issues so I have to do it like this. Right, it should load up. Yeah, I've got a few fails. One sec, I'll pause and. Right, I finally got Call of Duty loaded up. Right, from here, you're going to want to go to your mods folder which you made, which is YouTube in our case. In my case. Right, I'm still recording the screen as far as I know. Right, so from here you've loaded it up, and this probably will be lacky because I'm using a very bad screen recorder for doing games. We're going to load the game up, and it's apparent, as long as I haven't screwed anything up, then it's going to work fine. No, I forgot something. One sec. Okay, apparently I really can't spell. I typed that wrong. That's why I got an unknown function then. My fault completely. I shouldn't have done it like that. There you go, it loads fine. Right, there you go. Hello YouTube. It prints in the corner. That is iPrintlin, I think it is. Right, what it's done is it's found your code and it is constantly repeating it up in the top corner. So that's basically how you work with iPrintlin. You can have that just once without putting it in a loop script. Basically. Right now, let's start working with controls. So, if, if statement. And not if you have self, and then let's say. Uh, no, let's do that. Let's just do ADS button. Rest. Right, there's loads of these, well there's not really loads, there's about five of these you can use for controls. I'll put them in a comment tag here for when I put this in the description. You have ADS, button, pressed. And then you have attack, button, pressed. Use, button, press. Uh, and missing one press. What is that? Alright, so this one is when you aim down sights. Pretty obvious. ADS. This is when you shoot. Um, this is when you click F slash X on your controller. F is for the PC, obviously. Then that one's pretty damn obvious, it's the frag button. And that one's even more obvious, it's the melee button. I shouldn't even have to type it, but there you go. Right, so if that's pressed, then we have to have an open bracket and a closed bracket. And inside this closed bracket, let's just use self I print in again. I did it right that time. Hi, YouTube. Right, that always has to go at the end of your code. When it's an if, it doesn't go at the end, so you wouldn't have one there. Or inside there, because that would make it not work inside any if statement or for statement or while statement you don't need them at the end of the 
for or while or if, you just have to have it at the end of your code. So let's say we classify that as a code, we classify that as a statement. It will never go at the end of a statement, but it will go at the end of a code. So, and now we just need to make this repeat. So every frame, 0 0.01, every frame, oops, one too many, every I really can't spell today. Every frame every frame it'll print in that only if you aim down your sights. So let's see if we did this right. Here and I have this binded to map underline restart. I just have the I button which allows me to restart it really quick so we put the code. Okay, so it's reloaded the debug now, and it won't be up in the corner. Yeah, very bad, for to say. So, let's shoot. Nothing happens. Now let's aim down sights. There you go. That only happens when you aim down your sights. Alright, there we go. That's pretty much the basics of how to use stuff like that. Um, I will have that in the description on how to do it. Right, I'm not really sure what I should do next, but I guess the most common thing is... Well, people generally ask me how to make a mod menu base or something, but you have to know this stuff first. So, I'm not going to teach you how to make a mod menu base yet, because you need to know the basics. So we're going to put a 1 there to leave that, and now we're going to have test again. And that was my phone going off. I'll be back in a minute, my phone's going off. Right, okay, even though I just got called, let's carry on with this. Okay, so we've gone through for, and we've gone through the if. So now we're going to go a bit more into for and if, and argument statements. Argument is what you put af when you are calling, well, making your thread. So if we have argument, let's just, y this can be anything. So we're going to have argument. Just put argument there. We can use this anywhere now. So we're going to put argument. We've got argument. So now we're going to put, let's say, if argument equals equals. It always has to be equals equals or equals or greater than or lower than or whatever. And we're going to have it hello. All right. This can be an either an integer or a string. A string is where it's in brackets, an integer is a number. Um, we're only going to put one code, so you don't need to put brackets in it. You can if you want, but it's sort of pointless. I'm just going to copy it straight out of there. So it's going to be that. So if we just put else, so if argument doesn't equal hello, then we're going to put this, and we're going to put let's just put by for a randomness. So right. When we call upon this, let's say we should call upon it, let's call it upon it in test, alright? And put this as test1. Right. So now we're going to combine two things we already know. So on ADS, we're going to put self thread, we're going to put that, and then we're going to put this. And we're going to put hello. So that's completed your argument now. So argument here, when this is threaded, that now equals hello. So that would be correct. But we're going to have. We're also going to have. Attack button pressed. And for that, we're going to equal nothing. We're just going to complete randomness. Right. This will print in bold. Print in. Let's put bold for this to just show off them both. Right. There you go. Basically, as soon as this argument, this thread gets called upon, it will complete its argument, like it's there. And then it, this if statement checks the argument, and if it equals hello, which it does only when you're pressing the ADS button, it will say hello YouTube. If else, basically else means if it doesn't, or if it's different to that, it will equal by YouTube. And we've got that there just as a demonstration. So we're going to go here and we're going to restart. 
while it restarts I'm going to have a quick drink. Trust me, it does not normally take this long to load. Annoyingly, it's just because I'm writing this. Right, uh, I'll cruise in at 0 frames per second. Let's just look at the full quickly. There we go, that's actually pretty decent. Right, so we're going to press the ADS button. Hello YouTube. Right, now we're going to press the shoot button, which is attack, and it says buy YouTube. So we can actually hold them at the same time and they both work. But that's just showing it off our argument for else is working and our argument for if is working right that's actually getting upon the basis of working with mod menus because that actually comes into it quite a lot especially the arguments arguments are what people don't understand generally <sighs> arguments are hard to explain but simple at the same time basically you could have let's say we had self dot menu sort of upon a menu base equals hello actually no we'll do it the other way self dot hello and we we'll put menu now we can use menu here if menu equals hello which it obviously doesn't then it will do that if else it won't but it would only come up with by by youtube whatever Okay, because of this, yeah, I can. Because of this, basically, argument is basically having a menu equals, but without having to have it in there, because argument gets completed. So basically, when we put test one and then hello, it basically completes this. It goes argument equals hello. But it does that in the background. You can't see that and you don't need to actually type it. But it does it. And that's how an argument thread works in a way. You can do it for loads of advanced things. I could call upon this code a million times using argument. And just simply having if argument equals hello. Or if argument equals two. <laughs> not w. To and then run my code, or I can have it else if that's something I haven't quite shown you. Else if, so basically, if it doesn't equal that, but it might equal this, then argument might equal um, a D, let's say, and then it will run your code. <laughs> very simple stuff and to be honest I'm going to leave it at that just so you can get used to it, play around with it, see what you can get with that and then I'm going to put the next part up and I think I'm going to advance on messing around with shaders let's say and we're going to work on that right so I'm going to save that and I'm going to put it in the comment description below right thank you right I'm out <laughs> see ya